Hi dear Capricorns, welcome to my YouTube channel and in this video I'm going to talk about the transits for the month of March. This month is a bit paradoxical because from the astrological perspective there is not a lot going on but at the same time we have this huge astrological event uh, which is the lunar eclipse in Libra at the end of March. So let's begin. Uh, the first week of March should be relatively uneventful because uh, on March 3rd we have the last quarter moon in Sagittarius. And what does that mean? It means that the first week of March is uh, perfect for resting. Don't feel guilty if you uh, feel lazy, if you don't have energy to do things. It's actually a perfect time to rest. Uh, and you will need that energy uh, for the month of March because uh, the eclipses, uh, the, months that, the months that have eclipses tend to be energetically like intense, um, busy, like uh, hectic. In my case, for example, around the time of the eclipses, my routine turns upside down. Uh, like I only go back to normal like about a month after the eclipses, like the dust settles then. So dear Capricorns, I'll be honest with you. Uh, we're all going to be busy, hectic uh, until sometime in May. Okay, uh, because we're going to have the last, uh, uh, I mean, we're going to have an eclipse in uh, Aries in April. And so we will have to wait until May for the dust to settle. And so, uh, the first week of March, uh, it's also a perfect time to get ready for the upcoming new moon in Pisces. And uh, what I mean by that is like, it's, per it's a perfect time to set appointments so that you can go to it uh, after the new moon. It's also a great time to fill out applications so that you can find out about the decision after the new moon. Also, it's a great time to mail things that need to be mailed so that they are delivered by the time of the new moon. You get the idea, right? And so, after that, on March 9th, we have Mercury entering Aries until May 15th. And as you can see, this is an unusually long time for Mercury to spend in a sign. Normally, Mercury sprints through signs within just three weeks. But this time, uh, it's going to spend uh, slightly more than two months in Aries. And that is because of the upcoming Mercury retrograde in April. But I'm going to talk more about that in April. But what I do need to mention uh, for March is that Mercury is going to enter its shadow zone on March 18th. Okay, so dear Capricorns, if you need to sign contracts, agreements, uh, or buy electronics, then try doing so before March 18th. Uh, actually, Mar before March 18th is a perfect time for signing contracts and agreements because all of the planets are moving direct. Okay, and uh, the reason why I mentioned electronics is that um, along with contracts, agreements, Mercury also rules um, electronics. It rules commute, communication. And so uh, if you do need to buy those, try to, uh, try to buy electronics uh, before March 18th. I mean, technically, yes, you can still buy them uh, until March, uh, I mean, until April 1st, uh, which is when Mercury uh, officially starts retrograding, but still it's not really advised, okay, uh, to do those things uh, in the shadow zone. Next, uh, so by the way, Mercury is going to enter Aries and that is your fourth house, dear Capricorns. And fourth house uh, is the emotional foundation of our chart. It rules our family, mm, our relatives, our ancestors. Uh, it rules uh, the place we live at, literally. Uh, it's not just our childhood home, like any place you live at, that is your fourth house. And also it rules the people you live with. And so when Mercury enters that area, mm, there will be more communication with family, uh, more communication regarding like emotions. Capricorns, I know like you guys are not big on expressing emotions, but still uh, more uh, probably like more communication with family regarding real estate matters. So um, yeah, that is for Mercury. And then on March 10th, we have a new moon in Pisces on the 20th degree of Pisces. And so uh, this new moon is going to be loosely sandwiched between Saturn and Neptune. Saturn is in the early degrees of Pisces and Neptune is in the late degrees of Pisces. And the luminaries are going to meet somewhere in between, like roughly. And the thing about this new moon is that uh, they don't make, um, many, like the, the new moon does not make many aspects. Uh, the only major aspect uh, it makes is the sextile aspect to Uranus, which is a very supportive aspect. And so, yes, there will be a, an element of surprise or something unexpected or like a change in the, slight change in the routine. 
uh, it might even though it might be temporary but still uh, it will be something uh, that we can handle not like a nasty surprise all right and what else so this new moon uh, is in your third house and what does the third house mean the third house rules our communication uh, our phone the way we communicate uh, it rules our siblings uh, it rules uh, co transportation and commute it rules our peers uh, like classmates and stuff uh, so there might be something new regarding uh, that area of your life something new in the life of your sibling or something new regarding communication uh, something new uh, like regarding neighbors neighborhood okay because the third house also, also rules neighborhood and also there might be like uh, something regarding short distance travel uh, because third house is uh, traveling within like short distance it's not like far away travel so around the, like after this new moon you might have to travel somewhere uh, short distance or you might hear news about uh, regarding your sibling uh, news regarding neighbors uh, news regarding classmates stuff like that mm, and you can start expecting news announcements decisions uh, after march 6 because we start feeling the effects of the new moon four days before it actually occurs and another thing i need to mention about this new moon is that it is the last new moon before the solar eclipse in aries in april and the thing is sometimes the events associated with that uh, solar eclipse uh, can play out around this new moon uh, and I'm not saying that this is going to be true for all Capricorns. I'm just saying that this might be the case for some Capricorns. All right. And what else? So next. Uh, oh, also uh, around this new moon, you will have four planets in Pisces, Saturn, Sun, Moon and Neptune. Uh, <clears throat> So that is a lot. It's like a mini stellium you got in your third house. So uh, most of March uh, is very much focused on communication, siblings, short distance travel, uh, neighbors. Okay, uh, there might be a lot of texting, sending emails, uh, lots of communication. Mm, what else? Next. Uh, so after this new moon, uh, uh, about a day after the new moon, the, the moon is going to leave Pisces and enter Aries. But uh, Venus is going to enter Pisces and take the moon's place. So you will still have four planets in Pisces in your third house. Uh, after that, on March 19th, the sun enters Aries, as it always does uh, in March. Uh, and that marks the, the beginning of spring in the northern hemisphere, spring equinox. And... Um, after that, on March 22nd, Mars is going to enter Pisces uh, until April 30th. So even though uh, the Sun left Pisces, uh, the Sun left your third house, but Mar uh, Mars is going to take its place. So you will still have four planets in there. Um, and finally, on March 25th, we have a lunar eclipse in Libra, on the fifth degree of Libra. And dear Capricorns, this is significant because uh, for you, that is your tenth house. 10th house is like the uh, one of the backbone houses of our chart along with the fourth house so the 10th house rules our career our life purpose um, our social status like uh, how we are viewed uh, okay and that is our 10th house and so when you have a lunar eclipse in there like any eclipse it means there is a huge change in, like uh, in those areas so this year you are having eclipses in your fourth house and your tenth house. So uh, lots of changes in your family life, in your residence, in the place you live at, and in your career. Okay, uh, I would say more focus is dedicated to home life, but still uh, there are things happening in your uh, career house as well. Uh, <clears throat> so lunar eclipse. Lunar eclipse uh, is a full moon. Uh, full moons are about uh, illumination, culmination, clarity and achievement all right so there might be some big milestone for some capricorns and uh, some achievement because the lunar eclipses are uh, 20 full moons packed in one it's like a full moon on steroids so this is huge and we don't get eclipses um, like intense uh, in our houses like very often like so you get uh, eclipses in your 10th house every nine years so last time you had eclipses in your 10th house was back in 2014 and 2015. So try to remember what happened to you then, like regarding your career, your social status, your life purpose. And also, 
but the thing is back in 2014 and 15 the north node was in libra so the focus uh, was very much on your career like lots of possibilities probably lots of opportunities developments career wise but this time it's the south node south node is the point of release like point of sacrifice so um dear capricorn so like i'm not saying that this is gonna be like sacrificing career or something like that no it's just uh, there might be like um uh, there, there will be definitely changes but um yeah like <laughs> sorry i got confused like uh, uh, uh what i wanted to mention is try to think back to 2005 and 2006 because back then we had the same configuration that we have now the north node was in aries back then and the south node was in libra so do try to remember uh, did your uh, social status change back then uh, did you move back then did you change residence did you have to move because of your work uh, something like that those themes might have been very prominent uh, was there a big changes in your family life because you know fourth house rules our family <clears throat> and also for some Ted Capricorns might be that back then in 2005 and 2006 you like uh, realized what your life purpose is and now around this uh, time this is like the time when you are actually fulfilling those uh, you you are achieving those things that you dreamed up uh, 18 years ago and also uh, fourth house and tenth house uh, also is kind of related to marriages as well because social status so when you get married your social status changes right and so dear capricorn so this year you can expect changes in your family life in your residence and changes in your social status and i will I will make a separate video for the eclipses. Uh, so if you are interested, please uh, do check out that video. I'm going to post it soon. And so this is it for March, dear Capricorns. Uh, most of the month is going to be focused on uh, communication, siblings, uh, transportation, short distance travel, uh, and uh, peers, neighborhoods, neighbors. And then towards the end of March, the focus is going to shift towards your family life the sun is going to enter your fourth house illuminating the place you live at like the, the emotional foundations of your chart um, and the lunar eclipse is gonna uh, bring illumination uh, clarity achievement uh, towards your social status so thank you for watching dear capricorns i hope you enjoyed this video and i apologize if i was like ah uh, uh, like confusing things like i apologize and so yeah, I hope to see you guys in my April video. Bye.